Hi, this is Kate from Izzylicious Designs. Well, I wanted to show you how I have done Izzy Busy's hair, okay? Now, this, I wanted, I've always wanted her hair to be something that we can change at any given time. Hence, we have the little wigs that we can change and adapt. Now, as you can see, I've done her with long hair here. She's a little difficult to show you. And then at the back, we've got the, the long strands. Now, please excuse, I've got stitch markers here because I'm going to be showing you how I've done this. Now, this is her hair. And as you can see, I'm going to take it off. Okay, this is but this is how she would this is how she would look. All right, with her hair like like this. All right, and then as I said, on the back we've got the longer the longer side of it. So, hey, get your hair in the right order, madam. What we're going to do? I'm going to take her hair off, still like normal, with the button at the top of her head, and I'm going to show you this little wig that we've made. Excuse me, there, dear. All right, so this is her hair. This is the wig here. I've got the little little bangs and then each is uh, a strand like this and it's difficult to see because it is black these fringe ones these bangs are short okay they're short little ones and then the longer ones are about twice the size these short ones are about 10 a chain of 10 these longer ones are a chain of 25 now what I've done and I'm going to show you as I mentioned to you I always want these to be able to just come apart and you can change her style. So each of these, I hope you can see, are on a button. Can you see this is the button here? All right, there's the button. And then each of these segments, it's almost like doing um, hair extensions, has a button to it. And let's take the next one off so you can see. Here we go. This is one of the longer ones. And again, there's a button on the end of it here, right? And then we have the extension, like so. And I have another one here. And you could almost do these as uh, piggy tails on the, on, the, on the side of her head. Or you can use three of them and have them as the actual, you know, to cover her hair. And they're going to fit around the centre. So here's my magic ring. Where's my magic ring? It's in here somewhere. There's my magic ring right here. Okay, that's my magic ring. Now you can see that these bands are slightly uh, stretched for having the button through it. It is quite heavy. Okay, but that's the, the wig. And then you add the extensions to it. So you add the bangs. You've got your magic ring here at the centre. So you're going to go one in front of the magic ring with your button and pop that in for the fringe and then either side you would do the longer extensions so you work out there's your magic ring there's one side there's two sides so you pop that in like so and you pop this one in with its like so and then the third and final one you go at the very back here all right now does it mean that if you lift this up you've got the, the wig Yes, it does. But it's going to save you time of having to go through each and every little hole and put a strand because you're just going to be able to pop this on and off to change her hairstyle when you want to. So I'm going to show you how we do this. And I'm going to start at the very beginning with how I do it, but then I'm going to show you at the end stage how we do this. OK, so first of all, you're going to need a button. Right, not too huge, but one that's going to sit nicely and snugly uh, behind the bands. Okay, so this is about one and a half centimeters the button. All right, and then as I said, a metal threader. I've made this out of a twisty tie. I do have a tutorial on how you can make this. So if you're looking at making it easier to thread beads, go for my tutorial. You're going to take your first band and pop it through onto your metal threader. You are going to need stitch markers or C-clips or something to hold the ends. You're going to go from the back of the button, like this, through like that. Now before this side comes out, you want to pop a stitch marker on or your C-clip. I'll use a C-clip just to show you. I'm useless at using C-clips. My nails get in the way, I think, or something, get, something gets in the way. So pop your C-clip on the end so it doesn't go all the way through, okay? 
and you want a button that's got the four holes I think it's safer to have one with four holes take the other end and go through back through all right pull it oh hang on what have I done I've gone through two holes at the same time there we go so I'm through again and I'm going to put a stitch marker on here or again you can use your another C clip take your little thread it out and get another band pop it through you're going to do exactly the same thing Let's get rid of that broken band on the next two holes you're going to go through from the back to the front pop a little stitch marker on and then go from the from the front back through to the back like so and take your threader off now we're going to work on this one first that we don't have a stitch marker on okay and what we're going to do is pop your hook through just like that keep keep that on your hook we're going to count out now for if we were doing a long if we're doing one of the long extensions we're going to count out 25 bands if you're doing the short extension you're going to count out 10 okay and they kind of look like little spiders don't they so 10 or 25 we'll do 25 so 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 2 4 5 all right put the first one on you're chaining these all right one over the other I'm just doing a normal chain. I, I really just wanted this, this little doll to be very adaptable so that you could just change her wigs whenever you really wanted to. Chaining 25 like so you're going to take a stitch marker if I can find one okay pop that on now you're going to go back to the beginning all right not the little loop oops not the little loop that is going through your button you're going to leave that you're going to go through your first stitch here and what we're going to do is a single crochet all the way up so take your first band and do a slip knot and go through the second stitch and we're doing a single crochet all the way up to the end which we have in a stitch marker being held in a stitch marker And you're just going through each stitch doing a single crochet so this is going to take 50 bands in total for one strand because you've done 25 as a chain and then you're going and doing another one in each chain so that's another 25 So it is quite band intensive, depending on how many you do. Okay. 
oops, make sure I go through both loops. There we go. When you get up to the top here, you're going to tie off. So go through. Now it might you might not be able to just go through like this. You want to catch both the loops that are on your stitch marker. So catch both of them. So you are going at a different angle. Take your stitch marker out, pull through, you're doing a slip stitch, add the loop that's on your hook and tie off in a slip knot that you pull tight. Now to hide this you're going to go through some of these little V's that you see here. So go through, I go through about six of them. I just push my hook through three, three stitches like that, which is six little loops, and I pull the loop back. That is one. Now what I've done for each button for each hole in my button, so I've got four holes in my button, I've done three on each of them. So what I would do now is go back through that initial loop, okay? That's the initial loop that I had on my through my button. So I've got, these are my four initial loops, okay? One, two, three, four. So I've gone back through it, and I'm going to do another 25. So it's one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and you can do these as long as you like, 20, 21, 23, 24, and 25. And then I'll put my stitch marker on like that. And again, you go back, you skip your initial loop, which now has these on, and you're going to go all the way up doing your single crochets. Okay, like this. I'm going to do one set with you and then I'll show you. And I probably should have picked a, a different colour than black. Black is always, always seems difficult to view. So like I said, you can use this as ponytails, um, piggy tails on either side of a head. You can braid them. You can do them any colour you want. But I thought it was a, an easier way to be able to change the hair, still to be able to you know, detach parts of her hair and do a different hairstyle. rather than having it as a permanent style 
which when we do the Elsa wig, it, that one will be a permanent style. So now, just to do these two strands, that's a hundred bands. So you can work out how many bands you're going to need for this. Come here. Uh, I was turning it. There we go. And again, go through the two loops that are on your holding on your um, stitch marker. And put all three loops on and tie in a slip knot. Take your stitch marker off. Go through a couple of the little loops that make the V and pull your tie off band back to hide it. like that so that's two now you could leave it as two for each of them for each of these initial loops for mine I have done three in each so here you can see on this loop here I have one two three okay on this loop here I have one two three on this loop here one two three now I have not gone up and done my single crochet down here here is my fourth loop all right so even though this one has got three on it this is not complete yet and I need to do three on here if you choose to do less so be it you could just do two on this and two on this and two on each of them and you would have less strands it wouldn't be as thick but that's completely up to you what you how many you choose to put on there and as I said when you come to put it on your little hat here, first of all, find where your magic ring is. That's where the inside, the button is here. Okay, and you're going to position the uh, the the bangs. You're going to find your your center. Here's the bangs. So you're going to work out exactly where you want it. I would say here is the button for the bangs. So find your spot. Get the button and pop it through like so and you can just twist it around now are they going to be a bit higgledy piggledy yes but you can straighten them out and you might want to do some a bit you know some a bit uh, longer than the others it's completely up to you okay then again go for your magic ring you're going to go one down from the magic ring for the side so you want to go either side of the magic ring, left and right, okay, for the hair extensions. So pop this one on. Oopsie, come on, come on, come on. There we go, there's one. And again, you're just going to, it's a bit sort of tangly hair, isn't it? But that's okay. Then you're going to go the other side with another extension. And if you feel that that's enough, that's all you need to do. I'm going to go, where's my magic ring, there's my magic, I'm going to go here for this one. You could put ribbon in it to make it piggy tails. You could lower, you could lower these so that they're on the side of the head here and they look like, they would come out looking like um, little pigtails either side of a head. Let me show you that. If you put them about here, then they would look like big old pigtails so it's completely up to you where you put these and once you have them positioned yes you are going to need to spend a bit of time sort of straightening them and getting them in the right spot some are going to be higher than the others wriggle them around a bit and then you've got the, the back ones I haven't finished as I said I haven't finished this one but you've got the back one here you could maybe put that a bit lower so that it's at the back a bit lower make another one you could even put the the fourth one down here so that she has a much longer head head of hair but that is how I've done 
her hair. So I look forward to seeing how yours turns out. Take care. Bye.